This is going to be a study on the subject of eternal life. Do you understand eternal life? In 1 John 5, 13, it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So, how do you get eternal life? John's writing to those that believe on the name of the Son of God, that they may know that they have eternal life. That's how you get eternal life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you get it. That's how you got it, if you did believe. He says that you may know that you have eternal life. Some people don't know. Some people who do have eternal life don't even know it. And then a lot of people who don't have eternal life think that they have it. Because they don't understand eternal life. They don't understand how to get eternal life. But here's how you get it. In John 3.15 it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. What if your pastor said, I hope I'm going to heaven, or I hope so, or I won't know until I get there. You see, that's very unbiblical, because you can know. You may, you can know that you have eternal life, and you don't have to live from day to day in fear of hell, because you know you're going to heaven. If you'll listen to what I tell you today, if you have eternal life today, and you lose it tomorrow, then was it really eternal life or was it just temporary life? I think if you have eternal life today and you can lose it tomorrow, that's actually just temporary life, not eternal life. But there's a lot of people that believe that. They don't understand eternal life. Well, one of the first reasons, one of the first things that you can say about eternal life for a safe person is we are in eternal life and eternal life lives in us. Because Jesus does not move out once he moves in. And Jesus is eternal life. First John 5.11 And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. If Jesus Christ is eternal life, and he lives in me and I live in him, then we are in eternal life and eternal life lives in us. How can it go away if it's eternal? 1 John 5, 20, we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Jesus Christ is eternal life. We are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. I'm in Him, and He is eternal life. John ten twenty eight, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He gives us eternal life. No man can pluck us out of his hand. And to take it a step further for the church, we make up his hand because we make up his body. 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. When you got saved, you were baptized into the body of Christ. And this had absolutely nothing to do with water. Water baptism is something you do after you get saved. You see, there's more than one baptism in the Bible, and when you make all water, uh, when you make all baptism in the Bible be water baptism, that's when you end up being like the Church of Christ, thinking water baptism saves, which it does not. But when you first got, when you got saved, for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. That means when you got saved. You were put into the body of Jesus Christ. You were put into eternal life, and eternal life came to live in you. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23 says, And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. See, the church is not a building. It's the body of Christ. The body of Christ is made up of all born-again believers. And all born-again believers in the body have eternal life because they are in eternal life. The Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know how I know that I can't lose eternal life? And one of the ways you can understand eternal life better is to realize the eternal Spirit, the Holy Spirit, lives in you. He, through the eternal Spirit, offered Himself without spot to God. The Holy Spirit lives in you if you're saved. Ephesians 
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. That's that eternal spirit whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit has sealed me into the day of redemption. That's the rapture. Ephesians 1.13 In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Not after you were water baptized, not after you lived a good life, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The eternal spirit. If I have the eternal spirit living in me, and this is eternal life, how can it be gone tomorrow over something that I've done? It can't be gone. If, uh, Colossians 1.27 To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in me. He is eternal life. It's a mystery why he wants to live in me because I still got this sinful body. But I'm going to take it because I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to go to hell. The next thing, eternal life is a gift. And a gift is an earned. Does God take a gift back? If you could lose salvation, if you could lose eternal life, then God has to take a gift back. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life is a gift to God. Is He going to take the gift away? Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's a gift. Romans 5 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. It's a gift. Eternal life is a gift. It's, I mean, when you were a kid, you know, you, you were promised a gift for living right. You didn't live right. You most likely still got a gift anyway. And that's just the way it is with salvation. You don't deserve a gift. You didn't do nothing to deserve the gift. You don't do nothing to deserve to keep the gift. You couldn't do good enough to deserve to keep it. God keeps it, and it's a gift that he gave to you, and it's eternal, not temporary. It's an eternal promise. That's the next thing. Eternal life is an eternal promise. Does God break promises? Is God a liar? Ephesians 3, 6 says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. It's a promise. 2 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the promise of eternal life. T Titus 1.2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So you either believe you can lose your salvation and believe God's a liar, believe the Bible's a liar, or you believe that you can't lose it and the Bible's right and you're just a liar. You're the only one that's a liar, and everybody else, except God in the Bible. 1 John 2, 25, And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. Eternal life is a promise. The next thing, sins are eternally paid for. So we saw that we are in eternal life, and eternal life is in us. Eternal life is a gift. We have an eternal spirit living in us, and it's an eternal promise and the next thing is sins are eternally paid for. First John 2.2, 2, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Your sin, past, present, and future, is eternally paid for. Jesus only had to die for it one time. If it wasn't paid for then, wouldn't he have to die for it again and again and again and again? And if he paid for it and then you get get saved and then lose it, wouldn't you have to pay for it after he did if you could lose it? It's eternally paid for. You don't pay for the same crime twice. Your sins were already judged on the cross. Jesus already paid for your sin on the cross. For you to die and go to hell, you'd be paying for the, the same sin two times 
And you know about double jeopardy where you don't pay for the same crime two times. Jesus already paid for every sin you ever did or will do. And if you didn't deserve salvation when you got saved, why well, in the world do you think you deserve it after you got saved? That don't make no sense. So it's they're et eternally paid for. And next, the next thing is, eternal life involves eternal love. Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, some of the greatest verses on eternal security right here. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you don't understand, this just isn't a love that God has for anybody. This is a love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lost people aren't in Christ Jesus our Lord. Saved people are. And nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Showing you, you can't be separated from Christ Jesus. And you can't lose the love that's in Christ Jesus because it's eternal love. If you were to die and go to hell, God would have to quit loving you. And he's not going to. Next, it's eternal power. It's eternal power that keeps you saved. Romans 1.20 For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Are you keeping yourself saved by your own power, or is God keeping you saved by His power? 1 Peter 1.5 says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith and salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It's eternal power from an eternal God who paid for your sin on the cross. He's the one that keeps you saved. He's the one that made it possible for you to be saved. Nothing that you've done ever made you deserve it. Nothing you've done ever made it impossible for you to have the opportunity to get saved. See, when you start saying, well, I've done this so I can't be saved, or I did that so I lost my salvation, you're making it about what you've done Instead of about what the Lord Jesus Christ already did on the cross. And that's what it's all about. Jesus finished the work. He did all the work. You didn't do nothing but believe. You just believed and you got it. You didn't earn heaven. You didn't earn salvation. And at the same time, you never did anything that God would say you can't have an opportunity to be saved because you committed that certain sin. You see, quit looking at your life, quit looking at your own works, and look at what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So it's eternal power that keeps you. And next, my favorite, it's eternal blood. It's eternal blood that was shed on the cross. If you can lose your salvation, if you can get saved today and then lose your salvation tomorrow, what you're saying is that the blood of Jesus Christ is not sufficient to pay for your sins, but it's eternal blood. Acts 20, 28 says, He purchased us with His own blood. And that's God's blood. God purchased us with His own blood. Hebrews 10, 4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. See, that's the difference between the Old and the New Testament. People in the Old Testament, all they had was the blood of bulls and goats. The blood of bulls and goats could not take away sins. It was a temporary forgiveness going on. They could not have their sins cleared. They couldn't have them washed away. If you say that you got saved yesterday, the blood of Jesus saved you yesterday, and then you lose your salvation tomorrow, you make the blood of Jesus no better than the blood of bulls and goats. And it's way better than the blood of bulls and goats. The blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sins. But Jesus Christ's blood washes away sin past, present, and future. I believe Jesus Christ's blood is way more powerful than any sin I've ever committed, way more powerful than any sin ever committed by man, able to wash all those sins away if they'll just accept the payment. If they'll just accept the blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, their sins are gone. I don't care who they are. 
And if you say that they can't be saved, then you're saying the blood of Jesus Christ ain't powerful enough to pay for their sins. But it's eternal blood. Is the Lord's blood no better than the animal's blood in the Old Testament? That's what you're saying. You're saying it's no better if it can't. If you're one of these people that are saying that you've committed a certain sin and can't be saved because of that sin, you're saying that the blood of Jesus is not sufficient. If you're saying you got saved yesterday but you lost it tomorrow, you're saying the blood is not sufficient. The blood is sufficient. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Much more than being justified by His blood, we are saved from wrath through Him. So it's the eternal blood. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus. Do you understand eternal life now? You can know that you have eternal life. How do you get eternal life? By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus Christ do for you? He, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. And the moment you put your faith in that to get you to heaven, you have eternal life in you. And you're in eternal life because Jesus is eternal life. The moment you believe, you get the gift of eternal life. Eternal life is a gift. God doesn't take his gifts back. You get the eternal promise. Does God break promises? Absolutely not. Sins are eternally paid for when you believe. It's eternal love. The moment you believe... You enter the eternal love of God. And you, you can't get out of the eternal love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's not just the average love that God has for the world. That for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. When you believe, you get put in the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And it's eternal power. You're kept by eternal power the moment you believe. And you're washed by eternal blood not by the blood of bulls and goats that cannot take away sins, that will by no means clear the guilty, but by the precious blood of Christ that will wash all your sins away, past, present, and future. But I hope this quick little study made you understand what eternal life is, how to get eternal life, and why that you cannot lose eternal life.